Hello everyone and welcome to the Tech Bros podcast with myself, Egerton and... <laughs> hey, what's my name again? <laughs> it's Raj here, hello. It's me, I remembered. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to be called upon for my name. I was, I was caught off guard. Oh no, that's happened to me before. <laughs> You, 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 you just sit there and you're like, what am I supposed to say? Wait, what? Oh, how do I do this again? I've forgotten. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next episode. <laughs> so, today, we are going to talk about... Um, so, um, yeah, we've got three topics again. Um, we are going to talk about the contact tracing app, um, seeing your vaccine status, and COVID tra- travel passports. Well, I mean, technically, I mean, obviously, this is all, it's in three topics, but it really comes under one yeah, basically. big topic, really. I'm obviously, yeah. it's about, you know, about how we kind of go forward in terms of being able to track and trace uh, transmission of, mm-hmm. of COVID. Um and uh, just sort of how we how we sort of managing it and how the world's going to move forward. A lot of this is going to be based on, uh, I suppose, apps and solutions here mm. in the UK. Yeah, um, and I guess that part of that is just because uh, it's in a different place in terms of sort of vaccination progress. Yes, and um, and I think that a lot of what the UK does is going to then be used as uh it's going to be used as a case study for other countries yeah exactly particularly as we go into traveling and stuff like that which yeah. is what we're going to be talking about mm-hmm. yes so we're going to first start off with the contact tracing app so um the nhs um wow god knows how long this is it's been since we've had contact tracing now have we uh, we've had it for probably just under a year. Definitely think. over, definitely over a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely over a year, and um, yeah, it's been very mixed kind of reviews to the contract tracing app, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think we talked a little bit about it before in terms of how it works, which mm-hmm. is that it uses bluetooth in order to actually record ids of other phones that get close to you yeah so whenever there's bluetooth on your phone and it comes into contact where it's close to another phone there's a sort of digital handshake um and then you are basically uh considered like a contact so yeah. there's like a list of contacts essentially based on other phones that your bluetooth has come into contact with Yes. And so then it compares like the IDs that are in your contacts to IDs that have tested positive. So uh, people mm-hmm. would basically record positive tests into the app if they have been tested positive for COVID. Mm-hmm. And then it compares to that list and then it'll go and notify every single con- anyone who is coming to contact with that ID yeah. to say that, you know, there was a positive uh, test. And that uh, you have to self-isolate for... Yeah, and that you have to sell us seven yes. days or seven days or ten days, whatever it is now. Yeah, and then I guess the other, and I suppose the other one that's then other part of it is checking into venues. So whenever you go to a venue, such as um, a restaurant, a restaurant or a pub or mm. bar or something like that, there'll be a QR code at the front, and you basically on your app you scan that QR code so that if anyone tests positive. Uh, who also test checked into that venue, they can then notify everyone who checked in at a given time frame. Yeah. Although, uh, just to say, not all venues have that. Yes. Some venues have their own sort of um, system to record um, who's been there. I'm not sure how that works with NHS, if they pass that information onto the NHS or not. Yeah. They should do, in theory. 
But yeah, but yeah, I can imagine that it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen because I I went out yesterday and they had the option for two of them. So if you didn't have the NHS app, um, then um, you could do the venue's own like uh, like uh, location reporting, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I ended up doing that because I, do, I personally don't have the NHS app. So just to clarify, and this is something that will come into, into play as we sort of go into the other topics. Mm-hmm. There are two different apps, basically. For, for the NHS. There is the NHS COVID-19 app, yes. which is used for the test and trace stuff that yes. we just discussed. But then there's the NHS app. App which is more general to like the NHS as a whole, but it also can, will include stuff such as your vaccination status. Yes. So the thing that's a little bit, I guess, confusing is the fact that there are two different apps that you probably need, that you need to have. And yeah. if you don't have, probably recommend getting them, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Do your bit for the community. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So... Um... So with that, there's been very mixed reviews on the basis of um, the app itself not working or failing to notify you if you've been in contact with someone that's positive because I've um, had um, people that I know that they've been in contact with somebody that's positive and they've not been notified and it's only when they happen to go in the app that three days of self-isolation has passed Hmm. so So, what so one of the reasons behind that could be the fact that in order for you to actually have recorded an interaction with someone who's positive Mm -hmm. your bluetooth and your location needs to be on for the app to be scanning yeah and it also needs to be on and scanning for the other person as well. So both parties need to be yes. uh, sort of taking part in the hand in this sort of handshake. Mm-hmm. So if one of you don't don't have Bluetooth on, which you might not have if you're low on battery or something like that, mm-hmm. then it's not going to record it as as being a, a handshake with someone who's tested positive. Yeah. So that could be one of the reasons why there's, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of slip through the net and there's these sorts of interactions that the app then doesn't record on time. Mm -hmm. And it's only afterwards that when they record a positive test that they have to try and track people down. Track people down. But at that stage, it's already late. And also it does rely on people recording their tests in good time, you know? Yeah. It could well be that someone records positive tests. And let's be frank, it's a little scary, let's say. Mm -hmm. Um, to have a positive test and so maybe you don't straight away think about doing it maybe there's a delay between you getting tested and you getting your results and so you've already been out yeah at that stage um so it does require a lot of work on the part of everyone to actually do their bit yeah exactly exactly um i'm just trying to feel for the top of my head was there any other issues because i know that there um no the other issue was that it was the delay of rolling out the NHS COVID-19 app in the first place. Yes. And there's been a lot of talk about the, the how much it cost as well, which is about, it's about 4.6 billion pounds. Yeah. Exactly. Which is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Well, I mean, that's how much is allocated. Over half of that has been spent already, I think. Yeah. So there's been a lot of money put into it for sure. Yeah. And I think at the st- it's I think it has gotten better, but definitely at the start it wasn't working. Right? Yeah, it was it was pretty rubbish. I mean, that's like you know that's app testing, right? And I think that it's the same with uh, with actually developing vaccines as well. We're having to do these things in a very accelerated timeline. Yeah, exactly. And we have to then be able to understand any issues that come up and I, and fix them quickly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But yeah, no, as you said, it is it is getting better. Um, it is doing much better than it was before. It is capturing people that have been in contact with others. I think there's still a lot of work to be done on it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it still needs it still needs improvements because it is still lacking certain 
functionalities that you know really are essential especially with new variants that are coming out as well so um they're getting there but you know they need to just you know just push forward and i think a lot of it was i think a lot of the initial delays were due to the way that the app was envisioned to work being in conflict with a lot of the guidelines that the app companies yes. and apple had in place around yes. privacy and i think yes. that's what kind of factored into it now in fairness what they sort of do is that these digital ids that get put onto that get recorded mm-hmm. they're sort of randomly assigned and they change so no one's going to be able to take the id and actually trace a particular person and a particular location mm-hmm. um so in terms of privacy i think they've done a pretty decent job at it of yeah. course there are still problems there with having your location and your bluetooth always on yeah when you're going out which is i think which is sort of the envisioned way that this should work because if you are going out you have to have it on in order to record any interactions that take place yeah exactly exactly yeah so watch the space we'll see you know further down the line when uh, now that lockdown is being eased um, every month now so we'll see uh, what other sort of adjustments they will make to the app in the future um next topic is seeing your vaccine status which kind of stems from the last topic so um let's see where i'm gonna start i'm gonna start with the problem with seeing your vaccine status a problem that's been flagged up very recently in terms of this. So the NHS website um, is where you go to book your vaccine appointments. Now, the problem that was flagged a few weeks back was that if somebody was to know your name and your date of birth, they can easily find out if you've had your first vaccination or your second vaccination, you've had none. Because what happens is when you put the details in, it will say either, oh, you've got, you've had your first vaccination, you need to book your second, or you've had both of them, or it's not your time to get your vaccination yet. So someone could just enter a name and date of birth and get that information. And get that information. And that was flagged up. So um, at the moment, I don't know if the, if it, the changes have already been um, enforced already. But um, what the government is doing is trying to put like a, let's say, a second layer um, of checks so that it's not easy for people to find out because I think it was called that employers were actually doing that. Yes. But but I guess that's where, I mean, there's obviously been a discussion around whether vaccination should be a, a prerequisite for yeah. employment decisions. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's something that uh, we're still sort of trying to grapple with and think about, you know, whether it makes sense and whether it's fair um, yeah. in terms of, you know, people who, for example, can't get the vaccination for, for legitimate reasons. Reasons, yeah, exactly. Um, and so it kind of brings up some interesting questions around that. Yeah. So, um, I'm just like, how can I say this? Just going back to what you said about uh, it being potentially a means of employment. I, I would say that, yeah, it's, it's, it's very unfair to use your vaccination status as a means to get a job. Um, and in a way, it can actually come down as discrimination, I feel. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the thing is, is that even if they fix this problem of, you know, not being able to, of allow, making it so that people can't just look up someone and look up their vaccination status, yeah. employers could still ask for it. Yeah. They and could. at the end of the day, employers don't want to have a situation on, on their in their workplace mm. where something happens and someone contracts COVID. And, true, know. true. However, there's other ways of going around it. Like 
you could basically ask your employees to do lateral flow testing. Yeah. Or, you know, because where I work, um, you've got the option to do a lateral flow. Like me, I have NHS home kit, so I do a lateral flow. I do. I do lateral flows as well a um, couple mm. of times a week. Yeah. So that could be in, that could have been an avenue instead of, you know, just saying that basically you can't get a job because you're not vaccinated. But then also this ties into what we're sort of talking about in a bit, which is travel passports, the idea of the vaccination being used as a, yeah. as a prerequisite for travel. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think that that's a different matter? Well, the thing, the thing is, it... It's not really the UK per se saying that in order for you to travel, you need to have a vaccine passport. It's mainly the countries you're kind of going into that ask for that. So in theory, the UK can't really be blamed per se for forcing people to have a vaccine passport. However, um, in terms of vaccine passports as well, I think in the future a lot of places it won't just be used for travel. It will just be, it will probably be used for going into uh, into concert venues per se. Mm-hmm. Like if you are all fully vaccinated, there will be no need for you to do a lateral flow test upon arrival before you go into a concert venue per se. Yeah. So. I think the argument with that is that it kind of creates like a two-tier society Mm -hmm. where you've got the people that are able to get a vaccination and have opted into taking it and have got it versus those that either feel that they don't want to have it due to whatever reason or they can't have it or at that moment in time they're not eligible to have it and i guess there's also the i think having having the app as a way of of showing this information yeah um obviously not everyone has access to the same technology yes Um, now there obviously there are physical vaccination cards that you can get that you can use instead yeah, which, um, which is what the NHS gives out when you have your vaccination. Which the NHS should give out, which the well, NHS does, get, does give out rather, but mm-hmm. we have to then make sure that everyone else, like uh, in other countries, that there, is, that there is still the same kind of rigour in terms of documentation and recording and actually giving these sorts of cards to people so that they have that. Yeah. And that they're able to show their proof in, in, a, in some way. Mm-hmm. Um. And I guess also, I mean, you've had the vaccination yourself. Yes. Um, I have not because I've not been called yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because I'm I am a young whippersnapper, as they say. <laughs> um, so you've had it yourself. Have you have you seen uh the vaccination sort of app on your on your phone? Yeah, so um so I've um so I've got the NHS app, so um an update that actually went through um, this previous Monday now shows, it shows two different things. So the first one is to show your vaccination, uh, to show your vaccines. So that one, it shows you if you had your first or your second dose or seeing how things are September, your first dose. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, you've got that section there. And how much information does it give there? Does it give the date of vaccination or even which vaccine was actually given yeah. as well? It gives you the date and exact, uh, exactly what one uh, what one you have because there's certain countries that are allowing full vaccinated um, people to go. However, it's only specific vaccinations that will allow you to enter. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so that's kind of proof of that. Then you've got another one, which is, um, I believe, and I'm just going to the app now, uh, which um, kind of generates a letter mm-hmm. 
So yeah, it says here, check your COVID-19 vac- vaccine record and then share your COVID-19 status. So your share, the share your COVID-19 status is for when you're going on travels. So, um, so it says here, share a proof of your status if you are traveling. So it says, um, so when you click on travel, it will say here, before you travel, you need to make sure you check the entry requirements for your destination and make sure your vaccine information is correct. So it will show your name and your date of birth. Then if you have had one uh, vaccination, it will say COVID-19 um, records found show details. So you do that, you click on show details, and it comes up with some sort of QR code. I don't know what the QR code is for. And it was it will say exactly what vaccinations you had, the date you've had it, and it says here the, the manufacturer, the type of disease targeted mm-hmm. as well, the vaccine. Um, the vaccine product, the batch number, where you've had it, and the authority that is giving you the um, injection. So it has everything. And you could see this being used for for you know non COVID diseases as well. Um, yeah. You know, say if you need to have certain sh- uh, shots for uh, other diseases. Yeah, yeah, malaria or something like malaria, that. Malaria. Yeah. Um, if you're traveling to other countries, I think something like this could be useful. Yeah. I mean, the question that I have, and this is, I think I alluded to this earlier, is just the fact that there are two different apps that serve different purposes. Yes. However, you can't, are you able to record your vaccine status in the test and trace app? Because you might have a case where you've come into contact with someone via the Bluetooth system. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've come into contact with someone, but you've been vaccinated. So. You might have tested positive before, yes. but you've been vaccinated. And mm-hmm. um, then it's the question of, okay, if you've come into contact with someone, is that still uh, an interaction that you should still record? Um, yeah. I feel like maybe they are keeping it safe by not allowing you to record it in there just because of that case there where, mm. okay, you've been vaccinated, but you tested positive. positive at some point or maybe you um you know uh people can still contract covid even if they've had the vaccination even if the symptoms are not as severe yeah so that could still be you know better to be sort of safe than sorry exactly in that case yeah um but i think that's sort of one of the things is just the fact that you can't record your vaccine status in the test and trace app Mm -hmm. because it's sort of serving a different purpose yeah yeah, that's true. So, um, just going back to travel uh, briefly, um, it allows you to also print out a letter. So you have like a hard copy of your vaccination report if you've not got the cards. Or I think there's another option where you can get it set in the post. Mm-hmm. So it, like, it's all like official on sparkly paper sparkly paper yeah sparkly paper so um so yeah and i and i guess you have a bit of uh an inside perspective mm-hmm. uh, in terms of travel yes. um how do you envision the the sort of covid travel passport being used um and how and i guess this is another question of how mm-hmm. are you going to check that what's being shown on their phone is actually the app because you might have a case where people could just, I don't know, get a screenshot or something and show that. And if they're not being careful of actually looking at what's on the screen, yeah, that they aren't just showing like, oh yeah, I've been vaccinated, but it's yeah. actually not the app. Yes. So, um, so, in the case of making sure what we've been shown is legitimate, what we always, what we tend to do is that we tend not to really see anything electronic unless it is in the NHS app for now, because that's a, the only thing that's the only app you can use to show your fully vaccination status. 
so we kind of asked we kind of just double check that it's not a screenshot um do you ask to do you ask to be able to like interact no, with the, yeah, if the they thing? can go into the app oh okay yeah and you have to sort of watch them to make sure they're doing that. yeah to watch them because um yeah we don't know um as well even if it is a screenshot and you know their details match and it's accurate then perhaps is that maybe what the is that what the qr code is for so that you, maybe you could scan that and be able to have all the details well, the, the, the problem with the QR code is the QR code is not going to lead to anywhere because we haven't got anything to scan it on. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Hmm. They haven't actually really said what that QR code is there for. Oh, okay. So Maybe you should try scanning it and just see what it, what it does. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, in terms of... Um, I'm just trying to go back to your first question. Uh, what was your first question? How do you envision it being used? Yes, that was it. So, um, at the moment, I know that there's um, several airlines that are working with each other to kind of open up international travel. Um, So this will be through what we're probably going to be seeing, the IATA travel pass. Um, So, because a lot of countries now are opening up to vaccinated, um, uh, vaccinated people, um, there's not really any travel pass per se out there apart from NHS. Um, I'm not sure if the states has even got a travel pass yet, but there's not there's not really electronic means out there to show you you're vaccinated without you know, having to bring paperwork and cards and that. And the problem with that is, as soon as those go missing, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why there's kind of a need for electronic travel pass. And I guess I guess in terms of people traveling, yeah. the, the check that you've been vaccinated only happens at the point of, like, it happens at the airport. Yes. So you could book your holiday... And you don't have to show anything at that point. I guess the travel agents aren't going to be checking at that point. Exactly. Because they, because I guess to them, they don't... I, guess I suppose it's like they don't care that much because they just don't want to get, you know, some... Get your money. Buying in holidays, it. right? Yeah. And I guess it's up to them at the airports at that point to actually check that they've been vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um... Yeah, I think it's a bit, it's definitely going to be used to open back up interna- international travel. Yeah. And I think it's going to be there for a very long time. I don't do, think you, it, do you get the sense that um, that staff are, are going to be, are getting properly trained on, on this as well? I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. Um, there is a... Mm, I would hope so. There is still a lot of grey area in terms of travel. And the problem is with travel as well, regulations change every day. Yeah. That's the thing. But yeah, you'd hope that, you know, they would be fully trained on to see that, you know, this is a legitimate travel pass or or something like that. And I'm thinking as well, just going back to, you know, screenshots and all that kind of stuff and it, it takes me back to the uh railway uh, the rail card app yeah that if you have like a digital one when you open it it's got like a symbol and it changes color because mm-hmm. if it was a screenshot it'll just be one color so mm-hmm. it'll probably have some sort of like a seal that yeah. changes the colors to show that you know this is a live yeah sort of um document hmm. so probably that will be brought into it who knows yeah but then i guess you could also have a case where someone just creates an app mm-hmm. just a version of the app which has something that looks like a vaccination status yeah um like you need to sort of make it as hard to replicate as possible yeah 
that someone else couldn't just create something on their phone that yeah uh, that emulates a, a vaccination passport when really it isn't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, it's all early days at the moment. We um I know that again Ayata is trying to make some sort of travel pass, but they're all kind of working with all the major airlines trying to introduce something, but I don't think because there's been no news on it, I don't think it'll be ready for the summer. Yeah, I think it's it's too early really to have everything sort of in place. And again, as we've seen with, you know, Test and Trace, there are likely to be problems. Yes. You know, it's software and now ultimately software needs to be tested and there'll be issues with it. And so it's not going to work perfectly out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But over time, um, yeah, over time, um, when there seems to be more data on what countries require... And you know um, the stuff, the sort of stuff that they that they kind of want. It will get it will get better. It will get better. I can imagine, especially for for the staff checking through it, that's going to be a a point of real uh, com- complexity for them because they're having to uh, check what certain countries require, yeah. which is obviously going to be changing um, mm-hmm. pretty often. Mm-hmm. And you know, every single country probably has a different slightly different way of approaching this yeah so that's going to require a lot of uh kind of staying on top of what's actually happening and what what's being required Mm -hmm. so that's going to be something that's going to be really important in terms of actually training staff and yeah uh what's actually required of them and also just making sure that you know they aren't sort of lax at some point and just they take a glance at the phone and be like oh yeah that looks like a vaccination passport yeah it actually isn't. And it it's, isn't. Those are that's the sort of problem that can happen, unfortunately. Yes. Like even nowadays, people are even faking PCR tests. That's the thing. Yeah, they that can happen. So yeah. it's just we need to be very careful with that. Yeah. I'm sure that you know this summer for sure that we will definitely hear something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that being said, I, I just to sort of add one more thing. I have been using the gov, gov.uk uh, website for recording lateral flow tests. Yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually think that's been working very well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they, they save your details so that you can sort of enter your details quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you show up to the test center, you can get all of the information done quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of like the texting. So I get texts and emails for, with the results. And yeah. That comes up very quickly. Yes, it does. Um, so I feel like actually that's one of the, it's a system that I've had no problems with and I think it works very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's all on COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm sure that, you know, um, more when the um, country opens up, especially uh, with the next set of restrictions, well, depending on how things go in the next couple of weeks. At, at, the, at the time of recording. Yes, at the time of recording. <laughs> with a pinch of salt. Yes. Yes. A big old heap of salt. Yeah. That, you know, we'll definitely have more information regarding travel passports and how um the whole covid um app will probably evolve after this yeah as well yeah it's just ever changing so you know yeah i mean obviously like this is just the thing about how we're sort of dealing with with covid everything that we we've said maybe isn't relevant in a week's time yeah exactly <laughs> that's just sort of how it goes yes yes but we will see how it goes yeah, we shall. Uh huh. So, I've been Egerton. I've been Raj. I remembered to say my name this time. Yay! Hey. And we are the Tech Bros. <laughs> As always, um, feel free to uh, listen to our um, our other podcast on InfinityCast.co.uk, and also on our YouTube channel, and Spotify, and Anchor. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you for listening as always, and we shall see you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.